purpose of this screencast is to review the basic types of ion channels and their functional states. Recall that there are two basic types of ion channels, leak or leakage channels and gated channels. Leakage channels are essentially open all the time and are important for the resting memory potential. Gated channels, on the other hand, open and close or gate in response to specific electrical, chemical, and or mechanical signals. Recall that gating refers to the transition of channels between different states, such as closed to open. This is like having a pipe connected to a water pipe that is either open all the time or that can be opened and closed as needed. Gating of ion channels involves a temporary change in the channel structure that is a conformational change in the protein that changes the membrane's permeability and allows the current to flow as a result of net driving forces acting on ion species. Gating of ion channels involves a temporary change in channel structure that is a conformational change in the protein. There are currently three models of gating that may apply to the different types of ion channels. The first model is that there's a discrete change in one particular location of the ion channel. The second model is that there's a generalized change in the pore of the ion channel. The third model is that there's a blocking particle that will swing into place and block the pore of the channel. And you may recognize this model as being what causes inactivation in the voltage-gated sodium channels involved in generating an action potential. This conformational change in proteins causes a change in the membrane's permeability and allows the current to flow as a result of net driving forces acting on the ion species. The channel typically remains open for a few milliseconds, and this is the basis then for rapid neuronal signaling, both graded potentials and action potentials within the nervous system. If the structure of a protein changes, energy needs to be supplied to cause that change in conformation. There are three basic types of stimuli that provide the energy for gating. The first is ligand binding. Recall that a ligand is any molecule or ion that binds to a protein by non-covalent bonds, such as a neurotransmitter. Some examples that involve ligand-gated channels include the postsynaptic receptors involved producing synaptic potentials. The second stimulus is phosphorylation of the ion channel. The energy from binding of high-energy phosphate groups can cause some ion channels to open or close. This might occur, for example, due to activation of G proteins and second messenger systems. Some examples that involve phosphorylation-gated channels include those involved in olfactory, auditory, and visual or phototransduction. Often the ligand-gated and phosphorylation-gated channels are grouped together into one category of chemically-gated channels. The third type of stimuli are mechanical stimuli, for example, stretch. The energy associated with a mechanical stimulus, such as stretch, is transferred to cytoskeletal elements attached to the channel, which causes the channel to gate. Some examples that involve mechanically gated channels include the stretch-activated channels in sensory neurons of the stretch reflex and tendon reflex. The fourth stimulus is changes in voltage, namely changes in membrane potential, or the charge separation across the membrane. Some examples that involve voltage-gated channels include the voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels in the spike initiating zone and axon that are involved in producing action potentials. So let's look a little bit more at voltage-gated channels and how they respond to changes in voltage. So why do voltage-gated channels respond to changes in memory potential? Remember that ion channels are sequences of amino acids which can be negatively or positively charged. As the memory potential, or charge separation along the membrane, changes, it influences the orientation of these charged amino acids, leading to a conformational change in the ion channel. The next topic we want to review are the functional states of gated channels. Recall that there are three possible functional states that gated ion channels can be in. All gated channels will have a closed or resting state when the channel is closed and activatable, meaning it can respond to its gating stimulus. They will also have an open or active state 
in which the channel has opened in response to its getting stimulus and ions can flow through the channel. Some channels also have a refractory or inactivated state in which the channel is closed and inactivatable, meaning it cannot respond to its gating stimulus. So for instance, in this example, we have a channel that's in the closed or rest state. In response to its gating stimulus, which in this case is a change in memory potential, the channel will switch to the open state, and ions, in this case sodium, can flow through the channel. And then the channel will transition to the third state, the inactivated or refractory state. And from that state, we'll eventually go back to the closed or resting state. Not all channels have all three states. A gated channel will always have a closed and an open state. Some will also have a refractory state. For example, recall that the voltage-gated sodium channel involved in the action potential has all three states, while the voltage-gated potassium channel only has two states. And this is also represented in the fact that the voltage-gated sodium channel has two gates, while the voltage-gated potassium channel only has one gate. Ligand and voltage-gated channels that have refractory states can enter the refractory state through different processes. Voltage-gated channels can enter the refractory state following the open or activated state. For example, as shown here, voltage-gated sodium channel inactivation is due to the presence of a blocking particle that swings into the opening of the pore and blocks the flow of sodium ions through the pore. While that blocking particle blocks the pore, no sodium can flow until the channel transitions back to the closed resting state where the inactivation gate has reset to its starting position and now the activation gate can respond again to its gating stimulus. Ligand gated channels, on the other hand, can enter the refractory state due to prolonged exposure to their ligand, a process known as desensitization. This can be due, for example, to phosphorylation of part of a channel through the action of a second messenger that alters the conformation of the channel. This concludes the screencast on the basic types of ion channels and their functional states. If you have any questions, please bring them to recitation or office hours.